What is an epiphany? Let's examine the glorious and surprising manifestation of God's power to the Magi, who took a different path to Christ. We'll look at Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12, the epiphany that the Magi saw and its relevance for us today. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we've come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they'd seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Who were the Magi? Who were the wise men that visited Jesus? The Greek term is Magoi. Freiburg defines this as wise men. Launida adds that they studied the stars. Herodotus called them Persian priests who were interpreters of omens and dreams. Eastern traditions recount that the Magi were eventually baptized by the Apostle Thomas. The carol, We Three Kings, erroneously calls them kings, based on Psalm 72.11, a prophecy that may be completely fulfilled when Christ returns. They were pagan advisors to kings who were led to Christ via their own religion. Could God use other religions to lead people to Christ today? Most Jews chose not to be interested in the birth of their Messiah. What about us? What were the Magi's gifts? The gifts given to Jesus were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Three gifts. There could have been twelve or more Magi, according to Eastern traditions. Gold was a gift for royalty. Frankincense and myrrh are aromatic herbs with healing properties. Frankincense comes from the sap of boswellia trees and used for incense, perfume, and anointing oil. As a gift, it possibly symbolized Jesus' high priestly office. Myrrh comes from the sap of comophora trees, is bitter, and another ingredient of anointing oil. As a preservative, it was used to anoint the dead and possibly foresaw Jesus' death on the cross. The gifts may have been prophetic and symbolic of Christ as King high priest, and suffering savior. Why did the Magi worship a child? When the Magi inquired about Jesus, they said they'd come to worship him. This made Herod feel threatened, so he plotted to kill Jesus. When Jesus was tempted by Satan, he was told to bow down and worship the devil. But Jesus replied that worship is something reserved only for God, and he told the devil to leave. In Greek, the same wording is used for when a leper, a synagogue leader, the disciples, a Gentile woman, and Zebedee's wife also worshipped Jesus. Although it's popular for people to think of Jesus as merely a good man, he was God with us. Why is Western Christianity so weak? The Magi innocently inquired about Jesus but had no idea of the politics involved. Worldly power is threatened by the Messiah. The more corrupt that power is, the more it's threatened by a Savior who teaches that we must love our neighbor instead of oppress them, feed the poor instead of criticize them, 
and courageously welcomes strangers instead of fearfully building walls. Historically, power brokers have either tried to destroy the gospel or water it down, making it ineffective. Roman and Jewish leaders had profited greatly from a corrupt system. Zealots, potentially revolting to free Judea, were a threat to the system. True Christianity is a threat to modern greed. Is that why Western Christianity is weak and insipid? God is everywhere. We don't need to look far. His presence is obvious to people no matter their religion. As he did with the Magi, God can use other religions to bring people to Jesus. Let's take time to look at God's omnipresent epiphany. (laughs) 